Hello, and welcome to Stocks Down Under. My name is Stuart Roberts, and I'm one of the uh, co-founders of our publication. And joining me from Sydney on uh, Wednesday, the 23rd of November, is Mr. Jens Monzates, who's the new CEO of Infomedia, ASX IFM. Jens, good morning. Hey, Mark. Good morning. How are you? Yeah, so um, uh, the the opportunity, uh, Jens, in, in your new role is a, is a big one. You've joined uh, ASX uh, uh, IFM Infomedia, a company that has been around the market for a long time and, and grown quite a successful business with the famous um, uh, electronic parts catalog, which was the foundation business, and also bolted a couple of businesses on, on, on top of that. Um, but let's talk about you first. Uh, you first came to Australia to work uh, in a completely different kind of company uh, as managing director of WPP Australia and New Zealand. Yes, that's right. It's a big uh, media company media and advertising company, um, but at the end, it's all the same. It's all about uh, digital transformation. It's about the usage of data. It's about looking at the business, how to accelerate and turn it around and make it better. WPP UK uh, ended up taking the other 30% of, of WPP Australia and New Zealand after a bit of a tussle on price. Um, this is your next port of call. And, and once again, you're involved in a digital transformation strategy at Infomedia. Yeah, here I, I would not say it's a transformation, it's an acceleration. Uh, we are sitting on a huge amount of data, more than um, 1 billion bins, vehicle identification numbers. And as we know, data is ruling the world. And uh, with our global footprint now in the US and Europe and also in APEC, uh, we are leading uh, the pack here in, in driving a data-driven ecosystem for the automotive industry. Right. And uh, uh, if, if investors wanted any um, proof that uh, data was ruling the world, they only have to go visit their uh, their local service centre for their car if it's a reasonably late model car. Uh, and, and it's fair to say the, the service centre is probably using one of your services to know everything about you and the vehicle. Yeah, that's correct. So um, we do an end-to-end -end, uh, solution about service, about parts, but also we just acquired... Um, 18 months ago, the leading e-commerce platform in the US for parts uh, called Simple Part. And now it's all about the data, the connected car, the marketing as a service, because we are running the dealership uh, from an end-to-end -end perspective, from online booking, then to inspections, uh, you know, to run around the car, walk around with a with a um, checkup, what is broken, what is not broken. We send then photos or videos to the service people and uh, to the customer who are owning the car. And then we uh, can also make the billing and the uh, guesstimate of what they have to pay. And then um, if something was actually um, um, not approved by the owner of the car, we then have a campaign, we have a call out, um, and I'm very excited about this because in the future um, we will have uh, a lot more connected cars and uh, we are already running the BMW practice here in Sydney uh, on the connected cars. So everything, every conversation and dialogue between driver, dealership, OE is basically uh, run by our software and our services. Right. Now, you're uh, very well placed uh, to, to build this company because in a previous life before you left Europe, uh, you had a digital transformation for BMW in uh, in Munich. Uh, and it's fair to say that BMW uh, doesn't want to be left behind, in, as you were saying, in this whole connected car uh, ecosystem that we're moving into. Well, I think uh, BMW, BMW is leading uh, the digital experience. Um, I think the only more advanced um, uh, OE is Tesla. Tesla had an advantage of a greenfield approach, but uh, BMW was the first who were coming with connected cars who are offering an app uh, for the driver to interact with the car. And um, also now um, they are doing the first um, um, tests and, and models of subscription uh, related payments. So for, for example, for seat heating, it is already built in and with software over the air updates, you can activate it in the winter time and have a kind of subscription. So I think they are really um, ahead of the game. It was exciting. It was uh, my second time uh, with, with BMW as chief digital officer, um, you know, digitizing the full um, dealerships, the full marketing and sales uh, arm of BMW. 
And it was very exciting times at, at that point um, because we were pioneering uh, from that perspective. Right. Now, uh, fast forward, and I'm here at the Infimedia. Um, uh, if I could summarize the the, uh, the, the, the the story as it sits at the moment, for a long time, uh, Infimedia has been pro a provider of services. And uh, you're now emphasizing that it's it's more than just services, it's data. The whole world is driven by data. Once you have you've got data, you can make good decisions, and data is valuable. And and uh, and the more data is, the more the more valuable it is. Um, and 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 the customers will 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 pay for that. Um, how do you give give us a sense, if you will, of how this uh, uh, shift towards data can play itself out as you grow shareholder value at Infomedia? That's uh, very simple. Um, I I can give you an example with you. So you you might. You might have a, already a connected car so um, then we know where basically you are living because your car is sending a last state call when you are turning off the car in the evening that's probably in your garage or next to your house we would also know then uh, when you uh, are working when you drive to work is it uh, 6 30 a.m is it 7 a.m we would know where the routing of where you go we would also know what kind of dealership is preferred for your car. And we would also then probably know that your brake pads are down and they need to be in replacement. So it's a very, very relevant dialogue that we can have based on data with every single user on their specific uh, vehicle status and on their specific uh, um, routing. So we would then reach out and say, hey, Made your your brake pads are down. You should come in in the next two three months, um, and and we can repair them here at uh, what what car you're driving. So I drive a a, a, a eighteen year old uh, Honda Accord. So, uh, so my car isn't quite caught up to the digital revolution yet, but I can assure you the next car I have is is going to be well, well and truly plugged into your ecosystem. Yeah, but um, that's a good example. So normally after a few years, um, people are dropping out of the branded uh, service and they go to the aftermarket. Um, and then we can maybe see you by, you know, buying a part for your Honda uh, on our e-commerce platform. And then uh, we can reach out to you. We know what car you are driving. We can uh, make a specific offer from the service department from the dealership next door and we can call you in again and and maybe you want to trade your car into a, a new car and then uh, they would uh, obviously know a little bit about you and they will say hey Stuart this is what we can do for your car this is uh, the parts that you need this is the service you need but here's also the wonderful new Honda and uh, probably they try to make an upsell based again on data. Beautiful. Now, uh, all of this is, is made for a, a, a guidance for FY23 is uh, 127 to 132 million uh, was the guidance that was just given at the uh, at the annual general meeting. Um, yeah. So it, it, across the range of, of businesses within Infomedia, we're talking about a substantial um, uh, offering here and generally, uh, generally high margin. Um, what do you see as the biggest challenge of the next year or so as you um, as you start to take this company to the next level? So the first thing I would like to say is especially our data services are growing year over year by over 24%, which is excellent. Um, we are growing in all products and all regions. We don't have any debt. Um, we have a continuous track record of growing the company further. And now it's uh, time for pushing the accelerate button. Um, because I, I see um, many, many opportunities. So for example, our businesses in Americas are not yet integrated between the simple part business, the new acquisition and the Infomedia Americas business. So that's one point uh, that we are looking at. Another point is that uh, over the uh, last years, we, we had a, a little bit of um, complacency on our cost structure and, and therefore the cost structure were growing um, in, a, in a way that I don't like to see. So we are building the cost structure currently back where it belongs. Um, and then there is a huge opportunity from my perspective when we see the market share and the, the footprint that we have in this small country in Australia. Um, if we have the same market share in EMEA and the US, then we would be already uh, a two, three billion company. So the, the opportunity is to take that success and our products more to the world, more into Europe, also into Japan, into China, but then, uh, as I laid out, um, most importantly, into the US, because there we are still 
subscale and there's a nice run rate and a nice uh, growth opportunity in that uh, market and in that continent. Right. Um, now, very much encouraging investors uh, to to attend the Investor Day on the seventh uh, of December, which um, which Infomedia is organising. Be a chance to um, to to hear from uh, from Jens and his colleagues uh, in, in in more detail. And uh, and I'm I'm expecting that you'll you'll sketch out uh, some of some of these uh, the, these growth opportunities uh, as far as the board uh, is willing to let you tell us uh, what's going on. <laughs> I think the board is very supportive of our new strategy of our new and more enhanced vision, um, having data front and center of everything that we do. Um, I'm very excited to see um, the investors and uh, to also describe the next three to five years growth story that uh, we are going to undertake now. And uh, therefore I'm very much looking forward to see um, many, many um, investors or the investor community at the CBD in Sydney on the 7th of December. All right. So we're going to include a link to the um, to that meeting. You're, you're very free to, uh, to 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 sign up and, uh, and and be there on the day. Jens, let me just conclude with this. It's been a tough year for the market generally, particularly uh, uh, tech stocks. So Infomedia stock is is um, is worth a lot less now than it was um, it was a year ago. But you yourself were, were in the market recently buying some stock, as was your chairman uh, Bart Vogel. Uh, so you must see some some upside from here. Well, it never waste a good crisis. So um, <laughs> we obviously. We obviously uh, saw um, with the high inflation rate that especially recurring business and our business is a recurring business uh, was taking a, a bit of a hit. Um, so now it's a right time to invest. And this is why I also put my own money into this because um, from, from here uh, we can only grow as we did in the past. And our, um, our outlook looks quite promising at the moment. All right. Jens Monsais, thanks for joining us at uh, Stocks Down Under, and we'll see you on the 7th of December. Stuart, very, very, very nice talking to you, and thank you very much for um, the short interview. 